alongside TSN's director of scouting, Craig Button. So there were 16 teams in the draft lottery. Only the bottom 11 were actually eligible to pick first overall. That honor goes to the San Jose Sharks. Here's what we're going to do right now. We're going to have a mock draft. We're going to go through the 16 picks that have been decided so far in the draft lottery, and we're going to get you to do a mock draft. Are you ready for it? So we got, we got the ground rules, right? This isn't who the I think rules. they're going to take. No, who it has you not, would take. That I'm, the, I'm the director of scouting and general manager. I'm making the decisions for all these teams, the who and the why. I like the fact that you're adding titles to your uh, job description. <laughs> oh, I like yeah. that. That's why good. Not? All right, let's start with numbers one through five. <laughs> well, it's, well, we just talked about Mac Celebrini. Artem Lashoon off the right shot defense. I, I just think it fits really nicely for the Chicago Blackhawks. Ivan Demidoff in my view, is the second best player in this draft. He's dynamic. We heard so much about Matt Vay Mitchkoff. In my view, Ivan Demidoff is a better player than Matt Vay Mitchkoff. One year left on his contract. We'll see what that, uh, how teams look at that. But for me, his, his ability to play the game and, and impact it offensively in a significant way. I'm looking at a guy that I think can get 100 points in the National Hockey League. And you start to think about putting him in I think the Chicago Blackhawks very well could look at him at two and start thinking about, oh, we play him with Bedard. What kind of uh, dynamic duel could we have here? At the same time, I like Lev Shunoff just because of his ability to play those 24, 25 minutes a game on the back end. You know, you, you start to go to number four, Anton Siliev. You this know, guy's a big six strong... foot seven, Craig. Yeah, okay, this... so he's six foot seven. We're not playing Is basketball it... <laughs> here. We're playing hockey. He's a great skater, Gino. He's he acquitted himself so well in the KHL this year. And at the beginning of the year, you watch him skate, and and, and it was hard not to think about Victor Hedman when you watched yeah. him skate and you watch him play. I don't think he's got anywhere near the offense of Victor Hedman. I think he's a big, strong skating defenseman. I think that he's got the ability to absolutely be a top three defenseman. Maybe there's more there, but at the same time, those types of defensemen that can skate and play minutes and do it in such an economical manner because the skating is so good, but I don't think the offense is there, but certainly a player that has all the qualities you want to carry significant play on the blue line. Okay, so that's one through five. Let's pick it up now. Let's look at your picks six through ten. Again, who you would pick in those slots. So Utah. I'm just going to call them the Utes right for now. The Utah they Hockey Club. The the whatever we're going to call them. But uh, TJ Ginla is my pick for them. TJ Ginla has had such a, an, an impressive progression in his game. And, and you think about where he was at, watching him as a 16-year-old, didn't get a lot of prime playing time in Seattle, but he was around a team that went all the way to the Memorial Cup, was a really good team, and now he ends up in Kelowna. And from the beginning of this season, right through the U18 tournament, you just continuously see this player that asserts himself, asserts himself, exceptionally smart, competitive. Everything he does, he wants to take to the net. He plays what I call inside hockey. And, Gina, when I think about Tej, we drafted Jerome in 1995 in Dallas. And we thought he'd be a 30 to 35 goal scorer, power forward. And that was pretty good, right? Yeah. Well, we underestimated him. I was going to say, he was that and <laughs> Wait a second, he was, a, he was a way more. <laughs> like, like, you could even say we got it wrong. Okay? Yeah. And, and, at the end, and as I watch Tej, I say, am I going to underestimate him like we underestimated him? Not that we did, not that we, you know, you'd make a projection, but Tej is that good. And, and the way he plays, he doesn't play the game with the same type of edge, or, or kind of get everybody get it under everybody's skin like Brad Marchand, but that brilliant city plays the game with that Brad Marchand demonstrates, to me that's TJ Ginla. So, so strong, so good. And and, and a player like Jerome, I, I think there's so much more there. Yeah, he's got great genes. All right, uh, also in your top ten, Zane Parekh. Defenseman, but a 96 point <laughs> D man with the Saginaw spirit. I love Zane Parekh. And Certainly this draft has a lot of defensemen in it, has a lot of different players. And I am certain that as the NHL teams start to make their picks in the sphere, that, that you're going to see a lot of different selections. But that doesn't mean that one player is necessarily better than another player. It just means this player fits here and this player fits there. But Zane drives play from the blue line. He does it. People say he's casual. No, he's not. He's not casual. What he is is... It's nice when you make it look casual. You, know, that's a, yeah. you, you nailed it, Gino. And he, and he does make it look easy. And certainly, like all these players, there's developmental time ahead for them but but Zane has got the great confidence he's got the great vision and when the puck's on his stick he's got lots of options in his mind imagination creativity 
off the charts. All right, that wraps up the top 10 in your mock draft. Let's now take a look at 11 through 16. So Buffalo, Carter, Yakim, Chuck, they have a really good group of defensemen, but they don't have a right shot defenseman that can generate offense. Carter, Yakim, Chuck fits the bill. Philadelphia Flyers at 12. Jet Luchenko, another player like TJ Ginla, just kind of just progress, progress, progress. But to me, an elite two-way center iceman. And you understand how to play five-on-five five penalty killing power play. That's Jet Luchenko. I'm really turning my focus here to 13, to the Minnesota Wild, and Cole Iserman. Cole Eisenman is th this draft's best goal scorer. He broke Cole Just Caulfield's. Just a pure goal scorer. Yeah, and, and he broke Cole Caulfield's national team development program record. And when you watch him play, he doesn't just want to put the puck in the net. He wants to put the puck through the net. And he's got a competitive fire to him. And, and I said this to him over the course of the year a couple of times. I said, there's only one thing you're guilty of. It, it, it's that you want to be excellent every shift. And I think he put pressure on himself. I, I think he'll settle in and understand that less is more at times. That's part of the maturation. He could be very close to playing in the NHL after a year at BU. He's powerful. He's strong. And the Minnesota Wild need more goal scoring. They need, they need players that can really drive play significantly. And then, you know, 14, Tarek Parasek, who you're, who, who you're going to ask me about. Yeah, the San Jose, like, there's the San Jose Sharks have got first overall with Macklin Celebrini. And they've also got 14th pick. That's coming from the Pittsburgh Penguins. Do you think it, it, they may end up trying to deal one of those picks away, maybe the 14th pick overall? But if they hang on to it, where do you think they look? What could help? Terry Parasak of, of the Prince George Cougars. This was his first year in the Western Hockey League. He, he decided to stay back as a 16-year-old, and all it did was benefit him. He, he's, he's another smart offensive player. So you have Will Smith, you have Macklin Celebrini. Well, now, now you need some wingers. You have William Macklin, who you drafted a couple of years ago. Tarek Parasek fits the bill. You need players that can take advantage of the skill in the middle of the ice, that can finish those plays. Tarek can absolutely do that. There's other players there. I might have been inclined to say Berkeley Catton would be a nice pick there. But to me, when you have Will Smith and you have Macklin Celebrini, to me, now you look at other look areas of your team and, yeah. and, and try to do that. And, you know, like the Detroit Red Wings, uh, Michael Bransig, Negard, I mean, he, he is a hard-driving winger that just wants to, wants to make a difference in the game, hard-working. You know, he's a Norwegian that played in Sweden, and, you know, we've seen the uh, Red Wings have a lot of success in Sweden. And for the St. Louis Blues, Beckett Seneca with the Oshawa Generals. Beckett is, is a hard drive, big, strong, powerful, got great hands. And where the St. Louis Blues find themselves, they're just trying to add more skill and more size into the lineup. So that's how I see it playing out. Perfect. By the way, uh, the worst-kept secret of all time, it's official. The NHL draft this year is going to be held at the Sphere in Vegas on June 28th and 29th. And looking ahead to next year, Craig and I will do the mock draft at the Vegas Sphere with YouTube, with YouTube playing in the background. <laughs> at least that's what I think the plan is right now. It's not official just yet.